Hey everyone, my name is Patchworker and in this video I'm gonna explain how I created the first track of my EP called the Mr. Bill Remixes. So in this video I'm gonna explain first how the project came together and then I'm going to go into details on how I created the sounds you hear in this track. So first of all, the project as a whole. Um, as you may know, I'm a huge fan of Mr. Bill. He's an amazing producer and I highly recommend you check his music out. He also has a website on which you can subscribe and you can download a whole lot of the project files that he did for his own tracks. So this is where it all started. I uh, subscribed to his website and I got access to a whole bunch of project files that I could explore and dissect. This specific track uh, started with the track called Mörke or Morko, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but it's an amazing track. The link is in the description. And with the stems of his track, I slowly created my own sounds around them, as I will explain now. So let's dive into it. Uh, let's first start by the intro, which sounds like this. And so uh, you can hear this sort of road sound. This is straight from this track. I just rearranged a tiny bit how the chords were playing, but I found this chord progression so nice that I just knew I wanted to use it in my track. So I left it like this and I just put some reverb on it. Now you could also hear a sort of hit, a sort of bell in the introduction. It sounds like this. So this sound in itself is not so complicated. It's just, um, as you can see here, the wave shape is quite basic. It's pretty much just a, a sine wave uh, that I run through some effects, OTT, etc. Um, I did throw an arpeggiator in front of the uh, of the whole thing so that uh, it sounds, it plays the same note but an octave up and I didn't have to draw this in MIDI, which made it easier. But without the arpeggiator, it sounds like this. And with it, it sounds like this. Now, you could also hear probably a sort of whoosh in the reverb at the end, the very tail of the sound. Uh, let's hear it again. Here. And this sort of increase in volume of the reverb is achieved by first ascending the whole sound to a send track on which I have a reverb, and then automating an OTT on this reverb uh, send channel and automating the amount of this OTT, you can see it here. But so it's at 0% almost the whole time, except when I want to bring this reverb back in, uh, which is what gives this sort of um, um, increased volume. If I play it even more, you'll hear it even better. So I thought that was a cool trick, and uh, yeah, it sounded great in the intro, so I left it. Then still in the intro, you could hear this sort of um, voice sample that plays throughout the track. As you can see, I have a bunch of effects down there, some OTT to bring out uh, all the frequencies, an EQ8, uh, some reverb, etc. But the way this came together was quite interesting. Um, I pretty much had a huge session, as you can see down here, of sound design before I even started the track. I just messed around with the vocal samples that were in the original track. And so the sound design session sounds like this. And so the way I achieved this sort of grainy sound, I can show it here with the Rhodes thing. If you turn on the warp on any sample and you change it to texture mode, you turn the flux all the way down and then what you can do is that you can take this and by holding shift and putting your mouse at the end of this sample, you can extend it, sort of draw it like this. Or you can also change the segment BPM directly here. But this sort of stretches the sample out. And then when you play it back, it sounds all grainy and stuff. And it gets even more interesting when you mess around with the grain size down here while it's playing. So here is an example. So as you can hear, it creates all sorts of uh, pretty interesting sounds, which I did um, to create this huge file here of sound design. And I recommend you experiment with this technique, it's pretty awesome. 
Now I won't go into too much detail in the build-up to the drop because this is quite basic, I just added some percussions and new elements, but I'm just gonna go directly to the first drop, which sounds like this. So there's nothing too interesting in the kick snare channel, it just sounds like basically drums. Now in the percussions, there's a few more interesting things. Uh, it sounds like this. All of these fills are from the original track, but I just chopped them up and um, modified their timber so that it would fit my track better. Uh, I also used this trick down here where you take, say, a big sample of percussion, as, as it's here, and then you can turn on loop down there, and if you draw the length all the way down to 001, you can play with this little thing down there, and as you can see on the arrangement view, it will pick up and loop a very tiny section of uh, this huge file, and so it sounds like this, for example. Or like this. Or like this. Or like this. So by using this technique, I could reach these sort of sounds. And I did the same down there, I believe. Yep. In the synth section here, it's pretty much the same as the intro, except I did the bell sound go a bit crazier, as you can hear. And all of this to accompany what's going uh, under this sort of bell hit that gives the melody of the drop. Now we move on to something a bit more interesting in my opinion. It's this bass group, and it sounds like this. And so as you can hear, there are plenty of different sounds and layers and textures in there. And so the way I created these bass was by taking the original bass stem from the original track and running it through a bunch of effects. I don't have them all anymore, but I used to have a long, long chain of different effects. And uh, if you look at the MIDI file here, I just played some random notes uh, that were in key with my track. And with this, I could um, just mess around with the effects afterwards to just create interesting sounds. So for example, like this. And then you can mess around with the playhead and it sounds different. And so by messing around with this first patch, uh, I just created a whole bunch of huge bass sound design files, which sound probably like shit, but it gives plenty of interesting textures and sounds, so I used them afterwards in the drop. And so then it's just a matter of layering. I did this over and over again, then I resampled the bass that I flipped already and uh, I applied new effects to it, uh, all in the hope of finding uh, more interesting sounds, pretty much. I also have a sub bass to fill the very low end. And now we can move on to uh, the last section, the sort of uh, bridge to the next track, because all the tracks will follow each other. And uh, it sounds like this. So here I wanted to change the atmosphere a bit and go uh, to something a bit different, but still keep elements from the track. So I kept the bell hit that we've heard throughout the track and another element uh, that I found in the original, but I also added some uh, more aggressive basses that sound like this. And so these basses come from another sound design session in which I basically just messed around with two soul waves, slightly out of tune, and then a whole lot of effects, especially filtering and a chorus and some EQ, etc., to create these kind of sounds. And then I could take this 
and throw it into an auto filter to give it a bit more movement. And that's how I created the bases in the outro. Now in the outro, there's also those pads. And the way I created these sounds was with the help of an awesome plugin called Portal by Output. And this thing is insane. I've been using it a lot throughout the EP. This is um, a grainy audio effect. I would describe it as such. And the best way to use it, in my opinion, is when you throw just a random sound in it and then you just go throughout the presets. There are hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of presets. And you just uh, go through one and then you just dig a bit in there, you modify it a tiny bit, and then you play with this uh, XY control thing, which is great, and you get crazy results uh, quite fast as well. So I can't recommend it enough. Um, it's, it's really good. Have a look at it. But with this, I could create these sort of very dreamy pad textures just with the, using the road sample that we've heard before. I also used Portal to create these sort of crispy, folly sounds on the background. They sound like this. Maybe you can hear some slight resemblance with what was happening beforehand in the basses. This is completely normal. It's because I used Portal again, but this time I ran the entire track in it without the drums. So I made it run through Portal and then recorded it with some crazy presets and it creates those kind of sounds. <laughs> So I think this summarizes pretty well the main tricks that I used to create this track. It was a lot of fun to make and honestly I can't thank Mr. Bill enough for providing all of this amazing material online. Have a look at his website, it's in the description. Uh, just go check it out, it's awesome. And that's it for today, I'll see you next week for the release of the second track of my EP called the Mr. Bill Remixes. Until then, take care!